Shalom. First and foremost, I'm gonna give our praises to Yahweh. By Shem, Yahweh Shai, by Shem and Kakadash. The honest that was a pastor of great millstone who told me the truth and rule well. Please, blessings and salutations to I came out there. Scatter ball to the four kernels of the earth. That serving is truth and our truth is certainty. To I say Shalom. Just a bunch of the come to another video in the spirit. And at the top of this video is going to be about the villain Swelling Gang. And if you um have been watching, you know, and been in the news, you see that um you had the villain Swelling Gang uh, moved into Colorado. And they was uh, taking over apartment buildings, okay, kicking people out, you know, and taking over the building. And then they migrated their way up to Chicago, okay, on the same type of time. So it shows you what times we're in. Okay, that's why the scripture says, uh, Ephesians 5 and 15, it says, See then that ye, that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We are in evil days right now. Okay, you can see what's going on. You can th see how things are getting getting serious out here. Okay, um, you already you already seen the news about the immigration a problem that was going on. You know, you seen down there in Texas that they basically said that they was gonna take it upon themselves. But they wasn't gonna comply with the government. They was gonna take it upon themselves and do something about the immigration. They wasn't gonna let people in the border. So, but now with this Venezuelan thing, they didn't they didn't basically infiltrated, um the uh uh North America because they're coming down from South America and also in Venezuela there's been a lot of stuff going on there for, for years now. But now they didn't migrate it up here into to North America and you can see what's happening. You had the um I can't remember the name, but I it was this biker gang. They was they it was a video showing them on their bikes. It was probably a hundred plus bike bikers um on heading to Colorado saying they was getting ready to confront the villain swelling gang and that shows you where things are leading to okay or things are leading closer and closer to civil war things are leading closer and closer into jacob's trouble okay when all hell is about to start breaking uh breaking loose out here because they're going to try to group you know try to group us together you know if you're a negro latino or native american they're going to try to group you group group us together so let me grab this Jeremiah 30 and 7. Uh, let me grab. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. Now I'm going to just start at 7. It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he should be saved out of it. Yeah, it says that for that day is great. It is nothing like it. When you go to Daniel's 12 and 1, it says it's going to be a time of trouble that has never been seen before since there was a nation. Okay? So it's going to be, it's going to get crazy out here. Okay? But it's, and it's already getting crazy. Okay? When you have um, people from a whole another uh, country can, can, can come into your country and just take over. Okay? It's going to get crazy. And if, and yeah, um, we're connected by the border, South America and North America. But what message is that sending, you know, to these other countries, you know, that that are not allies with America? You know, they see that this place is it can be easily penetrated, you know, you know, it was a point in time where I think they was um bringing people in from Ukraine, you know, that because of what's going on over there. It was another country. I can't remember, but there was a, a lot of people to come here. Okay, that's why the scriptures call this place the, the unwalled villages. This place can be, this place doesn't have no walls. Okay, it's surrounded by water. You know, it can, it can be, you can, and you can, a ship can just pull up here and on a port and be bringing in whatever. So we're, we're entering to very serious times. Okay, that's why we have to make sure that us that's in this truth, you know, that we make sure that we're, you know, we're being on our watch as the scriptures tell us to be. And that we're being circumspect, you know, because there's a lot of things happening, you know, in the earth. And it's all happening because Yahweh Shem Shai is allowing this to happen. Because brothers always say things have to get bad before they get good. Because what's the what's the good that's gonna come out of this is the the, the kingdom. The kingdom. Okay. So let me grab this. Because all of this is prophecy. So this is a uh, second address, fifteen, and I 
Let's see where I'm gonna start it. Yep. So here's 15, I'm gonna start at 14. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draw of nigh, and one people should stand up and fight against another with swords in their hands. And that's what's gonna that's that's what we're gonna get to. Okay. People are not gonna just allow people are gonna start fighting back, you know, because you're in the swelling game. Okay, and then they in Chicago. You know, if you already have knowledge about Chicago, you know, you know how they get down there. So they run up against the right people, you know. Hey, you can just imagine what's gonna happen. But that's that's what's going that's that's the time these are the times that we're entering into, okay, we're the times of civil war. And it only makes sense for some stuff like this to start happening after they already made a movie called Civil War. So you see what we're leading to, okay? There's, nothing happens um by coincidence. Everything is happening for a reason. And everything is happening because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is making these things happen. Verse 16, it says, for there should be sedition among men and invading one another. Ain't that what's, ain't that what's happened? Hasn't the Venezuelan gang invaded uh, in America? It says they should not regard their they should not regard their kings nor princes in the course of their actions to stand in their power. Yeah. So you got people from a whole nother country. They don't care about these officials. They don't care about the police. They don't care about these government officials, these mayors, these people sitting in those um power seats. They don't care about them. And it's going to come a point in time where the people that's, that's in this country, they don't care about that. You see what's going on with this election. Also, you see the division that's going on with this election. That's what I'm saying. They're going to group us all together. Okay, if you're not, if you're not, <laughs> if you're not an Edomite, then the Edom, Esau going to be for Esau and Jake going to be for Jake. And then the different cultures among, amongst those. Okay. You got, you got, you got, um, you got Ishikar. Okay. You got your, you got your natives. You know, everyone's going to be for, for their, for their own. But in the, in the eye of E, they're going to group us all together. So if you got any type of, <laughs> any type of melanin in your skin, they going to, they going to look at you as a threat. Okay. And you see that going on with this election. Okay, basically you got, you got, you got Esau for Trump, and then you got the rest for Kamala, and they already said this. Um, I forgot his name. He was uh at one of the rallies for a Trump rally. He said um, if uh, if Trump doesn't win, then they got the whatever. I forgot what was the name of the game that he called. Say he glad that we got them on their side because civil war is gonna pop off. Also, this one Edomite, he did a video. He was saying it doesn't matter who wins, okay, because um, civil war is going to happen on Carlos, so who wins? Because if, if Trump wins, then, you know, you got the, the Trump supporters who going to, you know, be out here showing their horns, you know, still coming against uh, Jake. And then if Kamala wins, they're going to be raising hell. So it really doesn't matter. But all these things are going to happen because this is how Yahweh Shemel Shah has it set up to happen. Okay? Um, civil war is prophesied in the scripture. When you go to... Uh, Matthew 24 and 7. Now let me go to 6. It says, And you should hear of wars and rumors of war. Civil war. That's a war. That's a, that's, that's a type of war. It says, See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So, yeah, these things must happen, but the end is not yet because there's still other prophecy that has to be fulfilled. Okay? It says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Yeah, so you have different uh, nations out here that's going to uh, um, fight, against, fight, against, fight against each other. But also, you got different nations of people that's, that's all living in one country, like America, that's going to fight against each other. He said, and there should be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All, all these are the beginning of sorrows, and that's what's going on. All these are the beginning of sorrows. You got, you got this stuff going on. What I just mentioned about the Venezuelan game, the different things that stirring up civil war. You got, you got what's happening with the food industry, how inflation is happening, and they're and they're they're destroying food, and they're and they're um. 
putting all type of substances in food that is not good for you. And then you got pestilence. You have the MP thing that's that's going on right now. That's been that's being declared as a uh, I I believe as a, a pandemic, as a as a go as a global pandemic. If I'm not mistaken, it's, it says earthquakes in diverse places. Okay, there was there's been um. There's been information about earthquakes happening in places that never happened before. There was an earthquake that happened in New York, I believe, not too long ago. So places there, places there have not experienced earthquakes. Earthquakes is happening. That shows you that what does the scripture say when you go to Second Ezra nine. So like it. Here it is. Second Ezra is nine. It says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shall thou understand that it, that is the very same time wherein the highs will begin to visit the, visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there should be said, when there should be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people, then shall thou well understand that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before, even from the beginning. Yeah. So this is this is you this is an understanding that this is this is the times that Yahabashim Yahweh Shai talked about from the beginning and now they're they're coming, they're happening. And these are the, and this is this is how we know that this is the Lord visiting this place. Okay? Like it just said. Because you're seeing the things that's in the scriptures. That's how we know that these scriptures are true. Okay, that's how we know that these the words of the Heavenly Father is true. You know? It says that in Revelation nineteen. Friend, let me grab that. Type it in. Yeah, it's um. Let me see which one. Let me see which one I want. Yeah, I'm going to grab this one. Yeah, I'm going to grab this one. This is Revelations uh, 22 and 6. It says, and he said, and he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true. It says, and the Lord, Yahweh of the holy prophets, sent his angel to show unto his servants and things which must shortly be done. And that's what the Lord has done. Like it says in Amos 3 and 7, surely the Lord will do nothing but reveal his secrets to the servants and prophets. Okay, so he he he's revealed his secrets unto us, which is what the secrets of these scriptures. Okay, when us being able to to have this wisdom and knowledge and understanding, and has allowed us to be able to see the things that were written in these scriptures actually start coming to pass. That's how we know these words are faithful and true. Okay, and then when you and then verse seven it says, "Behold, I come quickly." Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book, and that's what we're doing. That's why the scriptures say, "Endure to the end." We have to endure to the end. We have to keep these sayings all the way to the end. Whatever our lot is at the end. You know, some of us may have to be um, martyrs for this truth. But how is I that we can endure all the way to the end and re receive that salvation. But then it says the same thing over here. When you come to uh, Revelations 21 and 5. It says, and he, and, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And that new means refresh. Okay, when 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 when, when Yahweh Shai returns and gather his elect, okay, he's gonna he's and he's gonna um he's gonna refresh. Everything's gonna be refreshed in the earth. 
Okay. He's going to gather up like we're going to be changed. And then the earth is going to be refreshed again. And it says, and he said unto me, right, for these words are true and faithful. Yes, these words are true and faithful. As we have to believe in these words. Um, Apostle Hart said it best. Um, their after camp lesson they was doing. You know, he's talking about when we go into the history, you know, of the scriptures. We read about different accounts. He said, the reason why we do it, he said, because these things actually happen. So us understanding that these things actually happen, what is this doing? This is giving us faith and building up our faith because these things actually happen. So the things that are said that are going to happen later down the road are going to happen because the things in the past happened. So that means that the things that are in the future that's prophesied to happen going to happen as well. And that's and that's how you build up your faith. So, yeah, let me, I'm going to grab this. It's just saying Ezra 16 and 17. It says, woe is me. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? Okay, this is the prophet Ezra because the prophet Ezra had visions. Okay, he was given visions to be able to see the things that were going to happen later down the road. And he's seen how bad things were and how bad things were going to be. And then Ezra also understood reincarnation. That's why it says, woe was me, woe was me, who would deliver me in those days? Because he understood that he would be back again living in those times. And it says, the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Yeah. And and we see that going on. Okay. Things things are getting bad out here, man. The like it says when you go to second verse fifteen and uh in the verse I think five and six, it says, I will hold my tongue no more, which is to touch in their wickedness. Okay, the Lord is not holding his tongue no more. Okay, the Lord is is executing judgment. Okay, and it's and it doesn't and it's coming upon all people. Okay, whether you're young, old, it don't matter who you are. Okay, the Lord is not respect of a person. So, yeah, man, you just gotta continue to stay on your watch and to be circumspect, you know, and see what and see how things are about to play out. Okay, the Apostle Hard Coin this year, the whole for year of Jacob's trouble. Okay, and you see these things going on with the Venezuelan gang. You see what's going on with this election. So we just have to wait and see what happens. So that's pretty much it. Uh, Lord willing, this video is edifying. I'm going to close out. I give all praises to Yahweh. Bye, Shem Yahweh Shai. Bye, Shem Rakaka